Hi guys, welcome in the, that series of video about the new features of Golem 5. In that video, I will focus on our new uh, triggering system. So, as you can see, I'm running Golem 5 right now, and uh, I created a pretty simple setup. So, I made a terrain out of some uh, Maya geometry, created a, a pop tool, added a couple of particles, and loaded our sample character asset. So I haven't defined any behavior yet, so that's why they're all playing the, the tuples. And uh, if I want to add behaviors and play with triggers, I'm going to open the behavior editor. So if you've been uh, using Golem before, you will notice that the behavior editor interface changed slightly. We introduce something called the trigger library, which is here. And as you can guess, all those tiny icons here define different triggers you can use into your scene. We also introduce uh, trigger operators and uh, I'll come back to that part a bit later. So if I want to add some behaviors to my character, so let's say I want to add a motion and uh, play that motion file, I can just create a motion behavior, put it into the flow, double click onto my behavior and load some uh, animation I previously exported. So here I'm going to use the walk cycle animation. I can randomize a bit the start frame so they don't all play the same frame at the same time. And if I look at the result, uh, I'm getting my walking characters playing a different frame at a different time. So nothing really fancy here. So what about adding a new motion behavior here and triggering the transition between the walk animation and that new animation? So here I'm going to load like a run animation and uh, I'm going to define when I'm going to uh, do transition between my walk animation and my run animation. So to define transition, you take uh, use of triggers. So you can see on each side of the behaviors, there are two little dots. And those dots are what we call triggers. So on the left part, there's a, the start trigger, which, de which define when does the behavior should start. By default, starting triggers are uh, using the Boolean trigger node, which always returns the same value, which is either true or false. So starting triggers always return true. And uh, stopping trigger always returns false. So when the simulation starts, the flow goes there until starting triggers. That one returns true. So we get in that behavior, play that behavior until that trigger here returns full, uh, returns true. So that one never returns true because it always falls. So we just get stuck in that behavior. If I play the same, you will notice that all my characters are just walking and never going to the run animation. So I'm going to change that. Um, and to change that, I have to First, double click onto my trigger, get into my trigger editor space, and now I can uh, drag and drop some uh, node. So let's say I want to use uh, a zone as a trigger. So I can use the polygon zone trigger here, and uh, I can create polygon zone into my scene as well, which is there. Change the scale a bit quicker. Okay. So now I'm going to use that trigger that polygon as a trigger and I want to specify that this trigger node is going to be the root of my uh, trigger graph. So the way the root works is that you can create a lot of, of different trees, a lot of different trigger uh, trees and specify which one you want to evaluate. So that lets you make a lot of experience and decide which one is the best uh, choice you can have. So what about now? can play my simulation and you can see that as soon as my characters get into the zone they just make the transition to that uh, run animation. So nothing fancy here, that's something you could have uh, easily done with Golem 4. So something which may have more tricky, more tricky to do with the previous version was sequencing triggers. So let's say you want to have first characters get into the zone and then evaluate another trigger and you just want that this sequence of triggers triggered the transition between the walk and the run animation. So uh, let's say I want to also paint a color on the ground and I want to use that to create another trigger. So, oops, I'm going to create like a, a paint trigger. I can uh, now sequence my uh, trigger saying first I want to evaluate am I into the zone and then I want to evaluate what's the color on the ground that I'm working on right now. So let's paint some color here. Uh, like the terrain, like the paint tool, create a new trigger zone, red, and 
change that a bit further. Um, zone there, which is not in place than the polygon. And um, I'm going to change my trigger to say, okay, I want to evaluate that new node I just painted in, and I want to evaluate the rest. So here, I just want my characters who have been through the polygon and been through the color run to make the transition to the run enemy. So you can see that the people who only went into the red color but don't make transition, you can see that the people who are only inside of the plane, they don't play the animation. It's only as soon as they get into the zone that they just, uh, into the color that they just uh, make transitions. So you can go like um, pretty more even in terms of uh, trigger uh, and trigger graphs. So you can even use here the different operators. So let's say you want to have all the characters to either do this or at frame 150, you want all of them to run. So you can use the R operator and um, connect the two branches of the trigger to that R operator. And now you're having two conditions. So first I'm defining first going into the polygon zone, then into the color, or I want the frame to be 150. So now you're having two combination of triggers, first getting into the zone, then into the color, or at frame 150, just having everybody to run. Some nice additions in, uh, inside of the triggers is something which is being asked by a lot of customers, which is called the fade trigger. So the fade trigger is just a way to have a more organic fading in or fading out a trigger. You don't want all the characters to run at 150, you want them to start running starting from frame 150. So the fade trigger allows you to define um, a fading time, so how many frames you want to use to fade in that behavior. So here I'm going to say, okay, I want to fade in on 150 frames, and you can define on that time how character is going to fade in. So you can say, okay, at the beginning of my uh, evaluation of that trigger, I want just a few of those guys to um, return through, and uh, at the end, I just want to have a few more again. So if I run that behavior, and that uh, triggered now, graph now, I'm having all my characters getting into the zone and into the, the red color, and then starting from one, 150, just fading in that you trigger. So it allows us to define a, you know, a more organic way to start animations. And um, obviously, as it's a tree, you can go even more crazy. You can have like some end operator here, connected here. And uh, say, okay, I want to also uh, check for uh, distance and also check for uh, driven attributes and make those as friends, etc. etc. And uh, if at some point you're trying to understand what's going on in terms of uh, triggers, you can change the root as I said previously. You can say, okay, the root of my triggers right now it's uh, all that graph here, but I'm not really sure why it's not working. So I can say, okay, I just want to evaluate that part of the trigger. Uh, graph, or I just want to evaluate that part here and see what's going on. Has, has it been correctly configured or not? So now I can check. Okay, they go into the zone, then into the red cutter. So that branch works well. What about evaluating another branch, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So hope that makes sense, um, and uh, see you in the next video.